Hello everyone, Boy Scout Wizard here. In this video, I'll be going over my advice for the five steps you could take to improve your own Escapist 2 prisons. These are the five steps I'll be going over in order. Starting with theme and ending with your play and publish. If you follow these steps, you can have your prisons going from looking like this to looking like this. However, I will not be covering the prison difficulty or the roll times. With all that info said, let's get right into it. The first step in building your escapist prison will be picking a theme. This will be the determining factor for what type of prison you're going to design. The theme pretty much affects your buildings, your floors, your interior, and what surroundings you put around them, like your scenery. A, a problem with many prisons I see in the workshop is that they have no theme or something to go off of. Uh, it, if you have a theme, it'll set your prison apart from so many others. There are countless of themes to choose from. Here I've arranged for the first that came to mind. Note, these are not the required designs when it comes to these sorts of themes, but it's just what I thought they would look like. While it is the most crucial, it can also be one of the most difficult to do. Most people don't know what they want to design when they go into prison building. Now it's important that even if you can't manage to think of a prison idea, don't get stressed out. I'll have some tips here that might be able to help you. My recommendation is to choose a location from your favorite movie, video game, or TV show, or a famous place. The possibilities are endless. Just go with what inspires you. After you've done that, you can then go into your planning and outline. The planning and outline step is kind of a place where you can look back on the whole picture, thinking about where you want to place your certain buildings and items. This doesn't have to be all done right away, but it's a good idea to have a general understanding of where you want to put those things when you start the process. The more time you spend here, the better your prison is going to shape up when you go to design it. Now, you could either outline your prison in the prison editor itself, but I always like to get a scratch piece of paper and write down different things on there. Note, that is completely optional. Do whatever works for you best. After you finish brainstorming, you can actually start building on your prison, building its walls, uh, filling in the flooring, all the main parts that the prison needs. Here that your prison can really come to life, but this is just the basic parts. Uh, you won't go too complex until after you finish with this step, although you can take it little by little, moving from building to building, if that makes it easier. For example, my Link Hyrule prison, I split into nine sections, and I would move to each section after I had completely fleshed out one section at a time, that way I could divide it up and it wouldn't seem like such of a daunting task. It's important to take your time during this step to show that you're putting in the work effort that other people want to see and it can make it look really great. If you're basing your prison off something else, always look at the source material. It's always good to take a look at what the source material offers. For my Star Wars prison, I ch checked out multiple games and also the movie itself to see how Tatooine and Moss Eisley looked in the movie and with different models. You don't have to copy everything shape for shape unless you want to stay true to its originality, which I did for the, both the Cantina and the Millennium Falcon, but you can also add your own little twist in the buildings and maybe even invent your own designs. One thing I do want to point out is to stay away from using the pre-made rooms. It's really hard to work with them. While they may be easy to use, they're not very practical. I mean, you can't really do much with them. Uh, Perhaps you could add some detail around to help even them out, but it's really hard to do, which is why I tried to stay as far away from them as possible when designing any of my prisons. While it does cut back on time, because you can simply just drag and drop rooms into the editor, it does severely lower the quality of your prison. Not many people really want to go into a prison where there's just a bunch of pre-made rooms. So go out there and create with your creative spark those custom rooms. They will look so much better, I promise you. If you're having trouble creating your own custom rooms, uh, I might make a second video on that. That way you all can see how I go about my process for creating those. After you've finished your basic design, you can then go into the detailing aspect of your build. This is where you can go into the building and make it look so much better using simple techniques and scenery. What I like to start with is going into the buildings first and moving from there. Once you've finished your interior, I like to move to the outside and get the nice scenery. For this castle, I decided to make a nice little inner garden uh, that connected to the guard towers on the four corners. I then followed up with a pathway 
surrounding the castle, finished off by a moat. As you can see, with just even a little bit of detail added, this was maybe 10 minutes that I spent doing this, it looks so much better than it did before. Just taking that extra time to put in a little extra detail can make a major difference, and s people will notice that sort of thing when they're trying to look for a prison that they want to play in the workshop. Once you've finally finished all your details and basic designing of your prison, you're ready to publish it to the workshop. But before you do that, make sure you play test it. There, <laughs> there, you'd be surprised how many bugs you might find. Uh, I've run into many errors with some of my older prisons, uh, and I wouldn't have had to gone back and fix them, and it was a whole hassle. Yep, make sure you play test them, make sure there's no bugs, and that you're all good to go. Another note, naming your prison. Name it something that relates to what you built. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, but name it something besides my prism. You'd be surprised how many people will name it my prism. In fact, I actually tried this and I searched my prison in the workshop and there are 79 pages of people that just named it my prison followed by a number. It's, it's, if you're going to go through the work of designing a really good prison, you might as well name it. Lastly, it's always optional, but I always have fun doing it. Make a story for your prison. Go into the descri description and try to think of something on what your person that's playing it would be doing. This gets the other people that play it involved in your own little world. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two from this Escapist 2 guide on how to improve your prisons in the prison editor. This was my first time doing this sort of thing, so I hope you liked it. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see more, if there's anything in particular you'd like me to focus on more next time. Uh, I'm always down to making these, especially if it helps the community out on how to improve their own prison designs. With that, good luck designing your prisons, and I'll see you in the next guide. Have a good day.